I went to Indigo, and as you can see, there was a sale, and I got the most, well, I wouldn't say random stuff, but I didn't get any books. First thing is a new bottle. This is, I think, my third bottle of the pineapple habanero hot sauce that I adore. Indigo now sells it, so that was convenient. This is probably the most impulse purchase I've made in a really long time, but it's these little lemon measuring spoons. They're ceramic, and they were 11 dollars but they were so cute they also had measuring cups but i figured the measuring cups felt more impractical these feel even though they're fancy they will like they'll they do the job just like any other regular measuring spoon whereas the measuring cups i feel like they're those would be harder to actually use in a practical sense but i adore these i have no regrets <laughs> the real reason i went there was for these guys this is a terracotta indoor outdoor cushion it came in a package of two and i got these to be my outdoor cushions for my patio chairs because they are metal chairs but the metal is kind of chipping away so currently uh, they aren't great because that chipping stuff can get on your clothes and then also if I'm sitting out there for long periods of time It's not the most comfortable. So cushion is the solution. They were regular 50 50 regular $60 for two and I got them for 36 bucks They don't have ties on them But I think it's gonna be fine because I plan on bringing them inside whenever I'm not using them just because I don't want bugs or rain to get them gross so there you go that was really the reason i went there this is all i should have bought this was okay for me to have bought this was like i said the impulse but an 11 dollar impulse isn't horrible cute oh, it's always fun to have a big bag big fan big fan reheating some homemade pizza that i made last night for dinner and let me just tell you not to brag or anything but last night i really killed it in the dinner department going through this book vegan at times by jessica seinfeld i'll have it linked down below so you can tell by the title it's vegan recipes for someone who occasionally eats vegan one of the things that she has in her pizza recipe if i can find it here i have it tabbed i think Please hold while I find it. Here it is. This is the pizza. She recommends putting her toppings, so her mushrooms, cherry tomatoes, onion, like anything that you're using, into a bowl and then drizzle some olive oil and season it with salt, pepper, and oregano. That's the key there. To add, I guess, a little bit of flavor. So I did that for this pizza just to the mushrooms because mushrooms on their own can be pretty bland. But ever since I've started doing this, and this is my second time doing it, it just adds such a nice amount of flavor to the mushroom. I make homemade pizza quite a bit because it's just such a great meal prep friendly meal. You get a few nights worth of dinners out of it. But I feel like I've just been trying to spice up something that I make all the time by changing up the ingredients I use on top of it. So I did peppers this time, right? onion, olives, which is pretty typical. But the mushrooms some hot sauce just something different than what i would normally do and then i also took the time yesterday to chop up a ton of veggies and i made a chickpea cold mediterranean salad i'll include a link to the recipe that i roughly followed it tastes so good cucumbers peppers chickpeas red onion feta it is delicious and now i have it sitting in my fridge like a big batch of it so that i can have a little bit of a side of it with dinner tonight but i can also have it as lunches which has been a big problem area for me as of late is finding inspiration for lunches because i don't know it's just been bland bland in flavor and bland in the lack of presence of good lunch ideas that spark passion <laughs> it's been good i love summer for cold pasta salad uh, recipes but i like this one because it uses chickpeas I chickpeas a lot you've seen me roast chickpeas i use them in salads they're really good if you if you heat them up and put it with some onion and oil and balsamic those are oh, so good they slap i don't typically buy a lot of cookbooks because in my head i'm like well i can just go online whenever i'm wanting to try a recipe and and there's a lot of great options but this one really captured my attention because visually every recipe has a, a photo and they look great. And I can make all of these because they're vegetarian friendly. I'm in a sweater for the first time in a bit because it's actually a bit chilly. What the heck is going on? What be going on? <laughs> work 
workout because I haven't been doing my workouts in the morning lately. I think I've talked about how I've been doing them more at the end of the day or at lunchtime. And this week I just feel like my brain has gotten a little cluttered and it probably would be beneficial. One of the benefits I think to a morning workout is getting some of that energy out sooner rather than later. I look naked in the shot, but I do have a sports bra on. I know Pilates is kind of like the trendy workout right now, but what I like about it and why I think beyond the trend, I, it will be something I come back to is because it's really hit me how great it is at combining movement that gets you sweating, which feels very empowering to me. Like I like a workout that makes me feel like I pushed myself. But it also has the breathing, the focus on the breath that yoga often has. And that's one of the reasons I love yoga is how much it trains you to think about your breathing and to use your breath as a tool to get to into and out of moves. I love yoga and I feel like especially during my period that's when I really dial in on yoga but Pilates is nice for that little extra burn. Also again really intense focus on breath work and I really like how Move with Nicole brings your attention to the the breathing while you're going through the movements because when you're not breathing properly the moves are much harder than when you are matching your movements with the breath. It's kind of wild mind-blowing. Long story short, I've been a big fan of it. Hydrating also in my thermo flask. Kind of bringing it back to the breath work point. I feel like I've been really bad at meditating as of late. This year has been a non-good meditation year and I like it when I can kind of do a BOGO deal, a two-for-one special with getting movement in and also making it a therapeutic experience because if you're focusing on breathing in and out, it kind of does not exactly the same thing that meditation does because when you get into a deep meditation or at least for me I feel like I'm I'm floating I feel like I can sense everything in my body and it's a really cool sensation when you can get to that place but the act of like just focusing on your breathing it kind of lets everything else escape your brain which is one of the things that you kind of get from meditation as well it's allowing thoughts to come in and out but not fixating on them but there's not much time to fixate on things when you're cursing your instructor for making you do another round of curtsy lunges that was the devil today it was a curtsy lunge i was like you I do shit talk my instructors also they can't they can't hear me but i will toss it out at them in a loving kind of way but in an also why are you making me do another round of these? That's just rude. Okay, time to go make brekkie. I think my stomach is actually going to murder me if I don't feed it. I'm just gonna make some eggs, but do you wanna see what $50 got me this week? Prepare not to be impressed, it's not fun. I got two loaves of rye bread. This is from Stone Mill. I really like Stone Mill breads, which is funny because some of their breads that I get have seeds in them, like on the top crust. And I distinctly remember as a child despising bread with seeds. I just thought it was way too healthy to be enjoyable. And don't get me wrong, a white loaf hits different all the time. That's, there's nothing that's ever gonna top that. But this one I really like too, the rye bread if I want something a little bit more plain. Um, but yeah, I do like this brand. It was the, was the point I was trying to make, despite past Caitlin being probably very against it. I got two things of unsweetened milked cashew milk from the Elmhurst brand. I like this brand because it's literally just filtered water and cashews. There's no additives. It's very simple. I got the cashew one for the first time in a really long time. I've been getting the oat one lately, uh, but oat milk is sold out. Kind of stops though. Uh, it has this like creamy vibe, which makes sense because cashews kind of creamy. I already ate this, but I thought I'd show it anyways. It's the Brooklyn Born Chocolate 3 Milk Chocolate Peanut Butter Cups. They're organic, so I guess it makes it uh, slightly better for you. But really, this was the impulse buy when I was on Instacart. I was like, you know what? I do want a treat, and it was delicious. Can't complain. And I also got Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile Soap, the unscented 18-in-1 baby version. And this is what I use for body wash. This is what I use for shaving. This is what I use for, those are the two things I use it for, makeup brush cleaning. It's just all good. And that was it. I know I touched on the fact that inflation and all that stuff is a thing. And, you know, not the funnest thing to talk about between you and I. I totally get that. Um, but I will say 
that I think if you shop a little smarter, it really does help combat some of the impact at the grocery store. Not necessarily shopping for your weekly needs, but shopping for what the deals are. Does that make sense? You know, if my bread is on sale this week, that's when you get two or three loaves to put in the freezer for the following week so that you don't have to buy it full price the next week. It requires a little bit more planning and patience and sometimes I fold like a piece of paper, uh, but when I'm able to have a little thought process there, it works out well. I could truly go on a whole rant about the price of cheese. My God, it is crazy. Anyways, enough of that real life non-fun talk. Uh, I think I'm going to actually take advantage of my balcony today and do some work outside. I think some fresh air, a change of scenery, changing up the regular routine in a simple way, like working outside is kind of what I need today. I'm excited to test out those cushions. sore it went numb because I was sitting on metal for two hours not the move so I think this is a good investment I had my little work session outside it was quite nice although I realized two things that I one had my camera to a weird color setting it was very orange and that last flip apologies we fixed it and also my nail polish needs to come off because nail polish looks great when it's looking great but when it looks all chipped I'm not a fan I mean I think that's not a controversial take, I think everyone would agree. Chipped nail polish isn't as nice as non-chipped nail polish. What a groundbreaking thought process right there. Anyways, I'm taking it off. A couple days ago, I finished reading through this book, Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Dr. Julie Smith. I had taken a quite a bit to get through it because I had taken breaks and I think I talked about it when I first bought it. It's written very, I wouldn't say essay style, but you don't need to there's not as much of a link between everything because every section tackles on like a new or tackles a new emotion. So you don't have to read it as a front to back book. It actually makes for a great book to use as more of like a resource when you are feeling like you need help with one particular area. I just decided to read it front to back, but I think to get the most out of it, it'll, I'll have to go back when I'm kind of in need of certain passages because each section has these uh, journal prompts that are very good, but also overwhelming to do all of the journal prompts if you're reading it all at once. So uh, I'm definitely gonna use this as a tool going forward. And I think it's a, it's a great one if you want some practical advice because those journal prompts can uh, real, really help guide you if you're struggling with stress or anxiety or the plethora of ups and downs that we go through in life. But there was one passage that I wanted to talk about here. One of the sections is on the meaning of life and there's a chapter, chapter 32, that's called the problem with quote unquote, I just want to be happy, aka pursuing happiness as a goal in life. Actually, I'm just going to take off the rest of this nail polish before I continue. We are in the clear. Okay, continuing on. We are given the impression that happiness is the norm and anything outside of that could be a mental health problem. We are also sold the idea that if we can achieve material wealth, happiness will arrive and stick around. But humans are not built to be in a constant state of happiness. We are built to respond to the challenges of survival. Emotions are a reflection of our physical state, our actions, beliefs, and what is going on around us. All of those things are constantly changing. Therefore, a normal state is one that constantly changes too. And then blah, 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 buying into the idea that happiness means constant positivity can leave us believing we have failed when we feel down. We feel like we are getting something wrong or we feel afraid that we may have a mental health problem. Thinking in that way then makes that dark cloudy day even darker. Sometimes we are not happy because we are human and life is difficult a lot of the time. I love this passage because I know for me personally, I've had these moments where, you know, I'm, I'm happy in life, then I go through these seasons of kind of neutral uh, feeling 
and inevitably though I find myself in this lower down mood and I have to push myself out of it and when I'm in that period I get frustrated that I found myself there again because I'm like well why do, why do I keep finding myself in this place and the thing is that's just kind of the part of life we're not always going to be happy uh, excited in this just yummy space headspace all the time there's a lot of things that influence our mood as the book says um, that are outside of our control. I just like the fact that that passage really reminds, reminded me of the fact that we are complex humans. We go through ups and we go through downs and we, we don't have to make ourselves feel worse about feeling down when we're in those moments just because we feel like we always need to be in a positive place, like that toxic positivity mindset. And of course, if you're going up and down in mood at a really rapid rate, that might be something to reflect on and consider what's what's happening there but i think it's completely normal to just go through normal regular seasons of like i'm doing great and maybe some pockets of time when you're not so great and if anything those not so great moments are opportunities for you to switch things up spark some change in your life change up your routine and um find like something new from that process learn something new for about yourself change your perspective on it i i feel like 2022 for me has been a very heavy year there's been a lot of great things this year a lot of positive of uh, positive things but it's been a heavier year of me emotionally just trying to figure things out and probably putting too much pr pressure on myself because of that as i've opened up here on the channel about in little bits and some parts of, of this i just really can't open up about because it, you know it's not just my story to tell it's helpful to have reminders like that to just ground you in those periods from not letting yourself spiral even deeper because you think you should be at a certain place or in a certain headspace rather than just accepting like where you are in the season of life and even just like what i said right there about how 2022 has had a lot of highs and a lot of positivity but there's also been some lower moments and both can exist in one period anyway so that is just the passage that kind of popped out to me that I thought was worth passing on to anyone who might need to hear that today. I have a link down below and I stand by the fact that I do also really like the fact that this book has more, as I think I even mentioned, practical tools. Where some books about emotions and feelings can sometimes be a little fluffy. I've talked about in the past how I've loved the book Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. And because I love that book so much, when I came across a TikTok talking about another book that she has written. I got intrigued, I picked it up, and I have started it. Bear with me with the title. I feel like it can hit you in the gut. It's called Marry Him, The Case for Settling for Mr. Good Enough. I can see the tone of where we're going with this, but I do, like I hesitate to wanna to talk too much about it until I read the entire book, because I kinda wanna get or understand the real takeaway here because I think it's gonna be more than just this very controversial title. You know, like, why do I have to settle for Mr. Good Enough? Uh, I think it's more than just that, at least based on what I read so far. So we shall see. I'll have it linked down below and I'll keep you guys posted on my thoughts, but I have really been getting into reading, well, I guess last year I read speaking across the divide and i found that to be such a powerful book at learning about how to communicate better in relationships whether they're platonic or romantic or whatever they are i think that is a really important skill so that book has really like unlocked another area of nonfiction that i think is really intriguing which is relationships and how we build relationships again platonically romantically all these things it's just an area that i feel like in my non-fiction reading i haven't done as much digging into so you know we were really hitting all the the genres health food business investing mental health i want to learn all the things i want my brain to expand and have knowledge and not have chipped fingernails i think ultimately that's my main life wish not happiness but good nails all the time actually not really i i don't i don't really have that much care for uh nail work but if i could just snap my fingers and have them nice all the time i would definitely be down for that <laughs> minimal work for me okay this is really getting off track i'm gonna go put this away now maybe it's the nail polish remover getting to my head that's making me just like actually 
ramble on and on and on. The indecision that I had over what to make for dinner today was really unreal because the options that I all wanted were all very different. One, pancakes for dinner. Two, vegetarian burger. Three, pasta with veggies and feta. I guess the burger and the pasta kind of have more of similar vibes, but the pancakes were a real wild card in there. Decided though to go with, that was my drum roll, pasta. We're doing the veggie pasta because uh, a couple weeks ago when I was making pizza, not the time that I did it in this vlog, but I had extra toppings and on Instagram I said that I put the extra toppings that were sliced up in this stasher silicone bag and kept it in the freezer so that I could use it for a stir fry. And this is me about to use it for a stir fry. I also have some chopped up zucchini here. Now I'm just anxiously waiting for the pot to boil and for the pan to heat up. Actually, this probably is already ready to rumba. I don't know if I've updated you on these pans, but it's been over six months since I've had them. And I'm still very much so in love with the caraway. You do have to be very specific with how you use them though, in terms of you can't use them, the part of the instructions when you get them is not to go beyond medium heat on them. So I keep it just below medium so that there's no chipping away of the inner coating. The outside also hasn't chipped too much. I have a few little nicks, but it's right at the bottom. It's not on this part. So that doesn't bother me so much. Here's my little baggie. I'm just gonna toss it all in. The only thing I wish that this pan, this size pan had was an accompanying lid. I use the lid for the bigger pan and just because it's flat, it can just go over it, no problem. I'm gonna use a penne pasta today. truly really just made one of the worst dressings I have ever made. It was so salty. I don't know what the heck happened there. You know what? I added a new Dijon mustard and I added a lot of it. I gotta go look and see what sodium is happening there. But I have the babyest amount of olive oil left to do this meal. So I'm glad I taste tested before I put that all over the pasta. That would have been quite um, quite tragic, I'm not gonna lie to you. I need to actually get the balsamic behind you. President's Choice Edition. Why am I using this? This isn't what I used for this. Why am I using flaky salt? Okay, this is round two. Oh. At this point that's edible, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess around with that much more. Out, add feta for a dish like this. I want some good chunks happening. The verdict is this is good, but I think the feta is saving the day here. It's making it more exciting. I'm just a happier person when feta is in my life. Let me tell you that. I'm gonna eat this while watching Tiffany Ferg's newest video about why does YouTube feel so lackluster and stale right now? I was that person in class that always wanted to hear what other people have to say when the teacher asked opinions about things and my brain was just working overtime, consuming and absorbing all of all of the thoughts. And then I would like somewhere find my opinion in there. I find it so interesting to watch uh, commentary YouTubers, but I could never imagine doing this, doing only that. But like I bow down to them because I find them so interesting and there's usually some really important conversations that get started out of them, but could not do it, could not do it. 